Proverbs chapter 26, verse 13. The slothful man saith, there's a lion in the way. A lion's in the street, excuse. As the door turns upon the hinges, so does the slothful upon his bed. He gets nowhere. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Slothful hides his hand in his bosom and grieves him to bring it again to his mouth. He's too, I mean, he puts his hand in the shirt. Too lazy to put it back. Do anything. The slugger is wise in his own deceit than seven men that can render a reason. You're not going to tell him nothing. He's always right. His opinion, his ways, his doing. You can have seven men in a room. You can show, hey, th this is what it is. This is the proof. This is the evidence. This is the facts. This is the date. A jury. You can put forth a jury and give them all the evidence. And the jury come back to the judge and say, this is what our render is, guilty or non-guilty. And the sluggard, uh, I don't believe what they said. I'm the one that's, and you got many people like that. People drive like that. I don't care if it's a red light, I can go right through it. I don't, you know, we had a guy the other day, he's riding his bike down the middle of the road. I don't care anything else. It's me. What I, I think I'm so important that I can do whatever I want to do. And if a police, Daytona Beach, they can pull the, the bikers over. I mean, the two wheel bikes. And they can, and they have, I've seen them issue tickets. And that guy's going to go and fight the court, fight the ticket because I was correct. He that passes by and meddleth with strife. You're going about your business. And here's an argument over here. Whatever. And he makes a detour to the argument. He's going from point A to point B. Well, in between then, here's a, a fight. Here's a a contention. Well, forget point B. I'm going to go to the contention. I'm going to go find out what these two guys are fighting, three guys are fighting about. It's like one that taketh a dog by its ear. I wouldn't advise you to do that. Now, the dogs speaking about in the Bible are not Fido. We have a little chihuahua called Peanut. That's not the dog. These dogs were wild. They ran in the streets. They were scavengers. They weren't household pets. Because in the law, dogs with paws and cats with paws, they were unclean. They're not going to heaven. Sorry. And it would not be advised in the time of the dogs in Solomon's time, to go up to a, a dog that is a scavenger and grab him by you, you're going to get bit. You're not going to be happy. And I remember, well, I don't, I don't remember, I remember the news report. Lyndon B. Johnson, the president, did that one time. Whatever it is, and you can get the, the video footage online, but he, he I've seen the video. He grabs his dog by the ears. Boy, did that get the animal activist angry with him so verse 17 is a wild dog go out in the streets and find a dog that is not tame it has no owner it's got to fight for survival and then try to pick him up by his ears ain't gonna happen i mean you think rottweilers and all that are vicious as a madman, that's not good, madman, who casts fire ban. You know, fire bans, they start fire, arson. They would shoot fire bans 
at a castle, at a at a uh, uh, the doors of a castle, the wooden door, to start a fire. Arrow, well, that's deadly. And death, <laughs> that's definitely deathly. So is the man, the madman, brings about death and destruction. So is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am I not? Am not I in sport? That is the that is the biblical definition of a practical joker. And I had one time I, I prayed a practical joke on somebody when I was working, and I caused the guy to get furiously angered and upset. And you know what? He rightfully so. I did another time a practical joke to somebody, and it just went too far. Practical jokes are not innocent. And the Bible says you might as well cause destruction and, and, and arson and death. And the Bible says you're deceiving. That's what practical joke is doing. We're deceiving. Where no wood is, the fire goes out. Simple. Can't understand the Bible. So where there is no tail bearer, Somebody lies, tell tales, speaks falsehood. People you find in school and at the library reading tales to children. People you would find at VBS will we'll read cute little stories to the children. We'll give the children veggie tales, veggie tales, veggie tales, veggie tales, tale. Bearer. I'm just reading to you the Bible. If you're angry with me, you're angry with the King James Bible and the author of the King James Bible, and just go ahead and just unfriend me because I don't care what you think. I care what the Bible says. You're going to have a Sunday school classroom, you better have the stories and the out of the King James Bible and nothing else. There's no room for Billy in his in his sailboat. The strife ceases. So to get rid of strife, get rid of the tail bearer. Discipline. Church discipline. If you were going to apply that to the church aid today. Get rid of the gossiper. Get rid of the storytellers. Get rid of the veggie tales. Patch the pirate. Ridiculous. How about Jonah in the whale? And Jonah died and went to hell. Ooh, that caused problems. As coals are to burning coals. And wood to fire makes it harder, makes it no longer. Oh, so is the countenance, the facial experience, uh, expression, man that kindles strife. So to get rid of the strife, get rid of the tail bearer. As, as you take wood away from a fire, the fire is not going to burn. But as those coals start more fires, and as you add more wood to the fire, it gets even hotter and fire. That's the word. So is a man that it's against all. And I'm going to say it because it is time of the election. We've got one more week, thank God. Contention. Well, the Democrats are bad and the Republicans are as contention. And that causes strife in the church. Get rid of it. Politics does not belong in the church. 
There's no politics, there's no Democrats, there's no Republicans, and there's no voting between Genesis, Revelation, politics does not belong behind the pulpit. It is akin to a strike. Take your elephant and your ass and get them out of the church building. I don't vote. I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are not mad at me because my my political affirmation. People are mad at me because I preach Jesus. People are mad at me in the church house because I don't vote. Oh! All right, I'm done. One more week, and then we hit Santa Claus. The words of a tale bearer. The one who's telling the tale. Many believe the talebearer are his wounds. That's not good. They go down into the inner parts of the belly. That's a hard expression to meet. They could cause ulcers. They can cause stomach problems. They can cause digestion problems. The stomach, I've been told by a, a stomach doctor and the nerve doctor, the stomach is your main focus of your nervous system. And have you ever noticed that something really, really scary happens in, in your event? I, I mean, if someone's coming down, at you down the road the wrong way, you feel it in your stomach. That's a natural reaction. And Solomon didn't know nothing. It is unhealthy. For a tail bearer, and he kindles a more of a fire, and there's strife, and it goes against the Bible when you don't teach the children Bible stories and tomatoes and green peppers and green beans that talk. No, they don't. I'm a man that loves a good salad, and my, my salad has never talked to me. By the way, you know the veggie tales? It was Cain that brought the vegetables, and God, God says, I don't want that. I want the blood. Burning lips. Ow. And a wicked heart. Are like a potsherd that's a broken piece of pottery. That's what Job uses to scrape off the boils and the scum and the pus and the blood of his boils. It takes a broken potsherd and has no value. Covered with silver dross. So your burning lips, your wicked heart, you say, oh, silver. That's not silver. It's a broken piece of pottery, and when you boil or heat up silver, and whatever floats to the top, that is scum, dross. That's the impurities of silver. You scrape it off and you throw it over there. You don't want that. And the more you scrape off and throw it over there, the purer the silver gets. You scrape it off, throw it over there. Well, what this is saying is what you, what you scraped off and threw over there, you put on a broken piece of pottery. And that is the valueless, valuelessness of burning lips and a wicked heart. It's vain. And we'll get into the next study of Book of Ecclesiastes, Lord willing. He that hateth disassembly, hide, conceal, disguise with his lips, layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Who hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Here's a man that hates, and he covers his hate with, I'm a nice guy. And then when he's, uh, I hate that guy. 
I hate that man. I hate that woman. And then when they're standing before that woman, their friendship. And what he does is he disguises his lips to the person he hates or people. They can't stand unless they're standing in front of that person and they lie. And when he wants to be fair and nice and sweet and lovable, the Bible says, believe him not. He's got a double forked tongue of a serpent. It's found in the scriptures. I don't know if it was in Psalms or Proverbs. Because there are seven abominations in his heart. He lies. He hates. He has no good will. He's a hypocrite. He's a pretender. He's a deceiver. An abomination just as much as an abomination of sodomites. Abomination of adultery. There's the abomination. Hey. And then behind your back, I don't want to kill you. That was almost like that was almost like King Saul. When David come up to him and, and King Saul kind of repents and then turns around, I gotta kill him. Not quite. I mean, Saul had a, had an evil spirit. This man is two-faced. And he covers his hatred with deceit. And what's the deceit? Aren't we just friends? You know Judas didn't, did not do that? Now we don't know how long, three and, a half, three and a half years, probably, that Judas walked with Jesus. Jesus uh, Judas didn't have, and yet the Bible says he was a thief. Judas did not have that, okay, I'll sell him out for 30 pieces of silver until when Jesus, when the woman broke the alabaster box, then he got upset and he went and talked with the, the priest, talked with them, didn't do nothing. And at the, at, the, at the Lord's Supper that night, the Last Supper, Satan entered the Judas. <coughs> We know that either Judas did not be this person and hated Jesus, or he totally deceived the disciples. Because when Jesus sat at the table and says, one of, them, one of you is going to deceive me this night, no one had an idea who it was. And the disciples themselves started saying, is it I? No one pointed their fingers at, at Judas. Now, if Judas did have verse 24, 25, and 26 in his heart against Jesus, he definitely and for surely hid it against Jesus and the other 11 disciples. And when you get in trouble with the world and you take a stand for Jesus you're gonna meet a lot of verse 24 25 and 26 they'll talk nice in front of your face and they'll be nice in front of your face but behind their back they'll stab you whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein now you're gonna reap what you sow now anybody you're going to dig a pit. There is a reason for a pit. And a pit would catch a lion. That we read about in verse 13. It would catch game. Animal game. You would set up a pit. Put leaves over it. Animal walk across. And they're trapped. And God intended telling Noah that man could eat animals. So it's not a man that digs a pit for an animal. 
It is a man that digs a pit for another man. And what he does for himself, be not deceived, God's not mocked. What sort of man soweth that he shall also reap. He'll come back and haunt him. He'll come back and bite him. He that rolls the stone, it will return upon him. You're going to get what you see, what you got, what you put into, what wickedness you do. You're going to reap what you sow, and you're going to reap much more. A lying tongue They say a half lying tongue, they say a polka dotted lying tongue. It says a lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it. What do you get when you get a preacher gets behind the pulpit, gets behind the pulpit, and then it starts lying to you? He hates you. What do you get when you get the Pope that makes unbiblical decoration? Sodomites are okay. Uh, what was the other mess he's saying? You don't have to believe in Jesus to be saved? That's a lying tongue and he don't care about his congregation and he don't care about the world. There is nothing good about the lying tongue. And a flattering mouth worketh ruin, destruction. Nothing hard with what we read. Plain black and white. Plain and simple. 